Having determined what path of the handle we need to achieve in order to take a rowing stroke, we now need to decide how we're going to move the body to effect that. Um, in rowing, it's, it's pretty important that you stick to a, a given rather prescriptive order and sequence of events, okay? Um, it might seem slightly unnecessary, but it's important that everybody learns the same way and does the same thing at the same time. So when you are at the finish position, that, that's the extraction position here, you should be leaning back far enough so that your tummy is just firing. If you're looking at it from the side, then it's probably about 11 o'clock you know, on the clock. Um, and so we know that the next thing we want to do is sort of tap down on the handle to take the handle out. So we're going to be like this. Now we keep our head still, we're just holding ourselves at that angle, while the arms go straight. At this point here, we are then going to make that movement that we'll cut away to explain, which is where you push your bum back towards the bow. So the bow is that way behind us, uh, but the front of the boat. So the movement I'm looking for, imagine a wall's behind you and you're going to touch it with your bum, bum to the bow. That's the movement. You see my spine stays the same direction. I'm not sort of bending down like this. Push your bum to the bow and then slide forwards like that, okay? Now, if you have, have issues with your hamstrings, you might just want to sort of pop your knees like that, just to allow the hamstrings to be less stressed so you can get further over, and then you can start sliding forwards. So, hands away, bum to the bow, slide forwards, wall, placement, stroke, perfection. From this position, we are now in the correct position to take the stroke, we just happen to be at the wrong end of the slide. So what I'm suggesting that should happen at this point is that you just allow your knees to rise and close the gap between your thighs and your tummy. Okay? So you just move forwards gradually like this, keeping the handle at the same height, that's where we need to keep the spoon off the water, until we arrive at this point here, which is fully compressed. Shins, it would it'd be nice if they were vertical, okay? The heels can come off the the, um, the, the foot plate at the front. So the heels come up. You're in a, now in a strong position to allow the handle just to rise and place the blade. So that's how we're going to do the body movements, okay, on the recovery. During the stroke, we need to be making sure that we're using our legs first because they're the most powerful part. Then we add the body and then we finish with the arms. So in fact, most of the stroke is about pushing with the legs, not pulling with the arms. Okay. So we've taken the blade out here, leaning back at one o'clock. As we push our bums back like that and get into the position here, the sort of time on the, sort of the clock again from the side would be about two o'clock maybe, something like that. You don't want to be doing that. You don't want to be falling down. You're pushing your bum back, keeping your back neutral. Into position there, drawing the feet to the seat, finding your length and your range, placing the blade in the water, okay? So those are the biomechanics. We've got the arms coming down and away, painting that line, as I, I proposed, down to the leg. The arms go straight. The body comes over, or the bum goes back. The legs rise. We place the blade. We use the legs. Open the body. Finish with the arms and paint. Arms, body, legs and place, legs, body, arms and paint. So let's just try a few of those strokes in a sort of continuous fashion.